Hey, what's up guys? Explanation Bros here. Today, I'll explain a war action film titled Black Hawk Down. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Black Hawk Down is a war and action film based on a non-fiction book of the same name about the details of the US military's mission in Somalia in October 1993. The movie showcases a mission commanded by the US president to capture Muhammad Farah Aydin, consisted by US elite soldiers, army rangers, Delta Force operators, and flight crew of the 160th SOAR to run the helicopters, especially the Black Hawks. The movie starts with the manifestations of the effectual starvation in Somalia due to the years of war of rival clans. It narrates back how after the civil war that it broke in Somalia followed suit, Aidid breaks into power. Aidid monopolizes the food shipments by which he uses hunger as his power to subdue the population in Mogadishu. Aidid and the militias loyal to him declared war against the UN peacekeepers. Under his watch, many dead people are just lying anywhere, and people whom are suffering of hunger and sickness are growing in numbers. In effect, the UN authorizes a US military-led mission to capture Aidid and restore order. They are given three weeks to do so. The action begins with the militias driving to the Red Cross Food Distribution Center, where hundreds of Somalian locals are bumping and fighting on one another to get a hold of the rice. Mualim, a militia leader, Reigns the unarmed civilians with bullets shouting that the foods are properties of Muhammad Faraidid, leaving a month of people dead and wounded. This scene unfolds in front of the US Range Chalk 4 led by Lieutenant as they roam around the area with a Super 6-4 helicopter. They ask for permission to intervene. However, the UN's jurisdiction is that they are powerless to intervene directly. As part of their mission, Delta Force and US Rangers keep eyes on Mr. Atto in the crowded market in Mogadishu. A man known to sell guns to Aidid's militia, following him, the US team then ambushes and holds captive of Mr. Atto, shows no fear as General Garrison talks to him. With Washington asking for situation reports every day under six week in Mogadishu, the team is now in fragile situation to get the mission done. In the camp, the team enjoins new recruit to the team including 18-year-old Private's first class Todd Blackburn. Blackburn is then introduced to Staff Sergeant Matt Eversman to be included in the Chalk 4 Rangers. While the same height, Lieutenant John Bales suffered from seizure attack. Staff Sergeant Eversman is then put in charge as commander of Ranger Chalk 4. On Sunday, October 3, 1993, at 5.53 a.m., with the information from U.S. military's local Somali intelligence source in the streets of Halwadig Road, the Bakara Market, a stronghold of militia, the task force commander have a meeting with the general garrison where they plan to kidnap two of the IDs underlings, Omar Salad, his top political advisor, and Abdi Hassan Awale, his interior minister. The same day, they will go to perform the plan, with the same mission template as before, reminding that the mission time for extraction will take no longer than 30 minutes, where the mission code word is read. The commanders then set to unite the plan with their team. Back in the camp, SPC Grimes is making his coffee. SPC Thomas tells him that his wish is granted. Grimes will be replacing him, assisting the 60 gunner. Staff Sergeant Eversman gather with his team and reminds them that they will all going to be okay. Staff Sergeant Eversman checks on Blackburn while he is eating bubblegum. Seemingly nervous about the mission, Blackburn however says that he is ready, he is trained for it. Everyone prepares their gear, ammo, and guns as a few hours is left before the operation begins. Back in Bakara Street, at 2.29pm, Abdi, the intelligence source, is riding the white car with black cross sign tape on its roof. U.S. military and air team watches over it as Abdi will lead them to the exact building where the targets are located. He is afraid to park in front of the exact building as too many militias are roaming outside of it, fearing that they might shot him, sounding scared. Abdi follows Garrison's order to park in front of it, or he won't get paid unless he do so. Abdi then parked in front of the building, gets out of his car as if to check if something is broken. As Abdi lifts the front of his car and smokes goes up, the task force received their confirmation signal. Meanwhile. All the Irene units are set out to go to the hostile area of Adid's militia. One by one, the soldiers boarding the Humvees, the Black Hawk, and Little Bird's helicopters leave the camp to start the mission. General Garrison comes near to them and say good luck to the boys. As the soldiers riding the helicopter passes through the residential area, a young boy that seems to pass time staring at the desert sees their helicopter and takes out a phone. The young boy rings another phone which is passed to one of Somali's militia leader, Moalib. Militias getting the signal that the US military are coming start to gather with their guns and equipment. They start to burn tires puffing out the black smoke in the sky to send the signal to everyone in the area. A few minutes later, the operation begins. The Irene unit arrives at the area. Civilians begin to scatter finding places to hide, and some still trying to watch the scene unfold. 
At 3.42, the Little Birds touch down to the land Delta Force operators as they enter inside the target building and captures prisoners and IDs advisors. On the corner, the Chalk Rangers holds down to the ground through ropes to escort with the ground extraction and take heavy fire against the roaming militias. As Blackburn is set to go down from the helicopter, an RPG shoot towards the helicopter they are boarding and Blackburn loses his grip and falls down to the ground severely wounded. Sergeant Eversman calls for Doc Schmidt to look at Blackburn. The Delta Force gathers all prisoners, and SFC Hoot Gibson says that they are ready for extraction. The Humvees led by LTC Danny McKnight receives the signal and moves out of the target building. They led the prisoners into the Humvees. Three Humvees is now detached from the convoy led by Staff Sergeant Strucker to bring Blackburn and some prisoners back to the UN Mogadishu airport to be taken care of. The militias at the rooftop of the buildings fires to the Humvees as they leave. Unseen and unnoticed, a militia hiding at the corner in the street fires directly at Sergeant Pilla in his neck leaving him pronounced dead on the spot. SFC Gibson then takes over the 50 gun. Shortly thereafter, three militia guys with rocket-propelled grenades shoots and hit Blackhawk Super 6-1. The Blackhawk piloted by Chief Warrant Officer Clifton Walcott is down in their convoy. General Garrison sends in SAR Bird and ground force to move and secure a new perimeter around the crash site. Chalk 4 Rangers is called to secure the crash site. Sergeant Eversman takes Sergeant Galantine and Shid with him, and calls Sergeant Nelson and T. Wombly to hold their current corner and exfil with the Humvees later. The ground forces are rerouted to meet at the crash site, secure the perimeter, and leave with the Humvees. Ranger Chalks, led by Captain Steele and other Delta forces, including Everman's unit, proceed to reach the Super 61's crash site. While the Chalk Rangers are struggling on their way to the crash site, tons of militia approaches the unit, causing more casualties on Captain Steele's route. The other two Rangers Chalks reaches the Super 61's crash site and set up a protective perimeter to await evacuation of the fallen pilots and wounded chiefs. While Captain Steele and about 40 Rangers are stuck in an adjacent area near the crash site, but are immobilized for they have many soldiers wounded with them. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Colonel McKnight together with Sergeant Maddox, carrying the prisoners is having difficulty with Super 64's delay of giving directions. They are facing a lot of casualties. An RPG is fired at one of the Humvees and Private Richard Skowalewski loses half of his body to the shot. LTC McKnight attends to him and struggles to say his final words to tell his girls he'll be fine. Because of the heavy casualty and vulnerability of the situation, LTC McKnight's column just decide that they will return to the base together with their casualties and prisoners. All the while, Sergeant Nelson and T. Wombly realizes that they are left by the Humvees they are supposed to exfil with. They then agree to just follow to the crash site. While on their way firing shots against the militias, Nelson have his hearing defected as T. Wombly fires near his ear. The two then encounter Sergeant Urick and unites to move out of their way to the crash. Super 68 drops rescue men to attend the fallen pilots of Super 61 crash. They cannot take the wounded chief, so Air commands the Super 64 to inbound into the crash site. But flying on their way, militias with RPG hit Super 64 causing it to crash too. Sergeant Sugart and Gordon request the General Garrison to go down to the crash and set up a perimeter until crowd support arrive. Chief Durant is able to survive the crash and Sergeant Triggert and Gordon take him in a walled space away from the open area. The site is eventually overrun by militias and kills two soldiers. The crowd finds Durant, hits him in the head, and captures him to bring him as prisoners to Aideed's militia. Humvees led by Sergeant Strucker arrives the base. Soldiers start to attend the wounded. Blackburn is still to gain consciousness. The soldiers then prepare for reinforcement to go back to the site and reloads all ammos and guns. Strucker then proceeds to lead the Humvees back to the hostile area. With them having to circle the city to get to the crash site, SFC Gibson requests to go to the Super 64 crash site on foot. As night falls, Delta Force Di Tomoso reunites with Chalk Rangers, evacuated and holding the perimeter in Super 61's crash site. A few minutes later, Sergeant Nelson, T. Wombly, and Urak joins them, as well as SFC Gibson. The soldiers then awaits for the rescue Humvees to arrive while holding defensive positions. Corporal Smith is shot in the leg. Staff Sergeant Eversman and Delta Force Smith attends to him but Sergeant Smith later dies due to blood exhaustion. Staff Sergeant Eversman suffers feeling of guilt with the casualty of his team. Realizing the disastrous situation of the Task Force Rangers in the mission, Major General Garrison calls upon the 10th Mountain Division where Malaysian and Pakistani armored units from the UN coalition could give reinforcements. Just as the night falls, Aideed's militia launches assault on the trapped soldiers at the Super 61's crash site. The trapped soldiers are able to hold the situation with the help of the remaining Little Bird helicopter's gunships. A couple of minutes later, the rescue arrives and shuts down the remaining militias firing at the soldiers. Lieutenant McKnight lead the removal of the casualties trapped in the fallen helicopters. The firing continues till the rescue soldiers set foot to leave the hostile area. 
they evacuate the wounded and casualties in the vehicles. So few Rangers and Delta Force are forced to run on foot to reach the safe zone at the stadium away from the crash site. Allied local residents are greeting them as they are passed through. At the stadium, all survivor soldiers give their goodbyes to all the fallen ones. Sergeant Eversman talks to the body remains of Corporal Smith and say that he will talk to Smith's parents when he gets home. The end titles recounts the aftermath of the mission where 1,000 Somalis died and 19 American soldiers lost their lives. President Clinton withdrew the Delta Force and the Rangers from Somali two weeks later. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.